As many fans of this channel know, I am African and I grew up in Africa. It is easy to believe that you are destined for poverty and yes, most people from poor countries believe that. However, when I was around 17, I started questioning such assumptions and the reason for my different opinions is because I often see rich people even in my country. But there are some other explanations for the reasons why some people are rich in poor countries. It may be that these people do ugly or illegal stuff. Maybe their father is a politician who has stolen a lot of money or maybe it's just luck. Anyway, I decided to study how money works and see myself whether being rich has something to do with luck, stealing or anything like that. By age 20, I already knew the formula of wealth creation and I was ready to follow such formula. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how to be rich in a poor country. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Riches has no home. In his book, The Science of Getting Rich, Wallace D. Wattles provoked us to think about something very important. He asked us to stop thinking about poverty as though it caused by certain geographical location but because if poverty has something to do with a particular geographical location, then certain people in certain geographical locations will be poor while everybody else will be rich. But that's not so. As we make this video today, millions of people are poor even in the richest countries of the world. For example, more than 70% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck according to some studies. And think about this, many people even in the poorest countries of the world are very wealthy. What does this tell us? I think it's very simple. Money doesn't have anything to do with where you live. But there's another problem here. If money doesn't have anything to do with where you live, then why do we have more poor people in certain continents than others? Why do we have more poverty in Africa and Asia than in Europe or America? I think I have an answer and that has to do with conditioning. Like begets like. The story was told about a farmer who brought an eagle's egg from his farm. When the farmer got home, he added the three eagle eggs with his chicken's eggs and his chicken hatched the eggs with hers. Many months after the little eagles have been hatched, they are there right with the chicks, eating everything the chicks were eaten, walking around the way the chicks walk around and having the same aspirations like those of the chicks. These three eagles grew up and lived their entire life just like chickens. They never flew or dared to leave like an eagle. I'm sure that you will believe this story easily because it happened in the kingdom of the birds. Well, like those eagles, like always begets like, even amongst human beings. So, what happens in poor countries is that when you're 7 years old, you'll notice that everyone around you is poor. And not just that these people are poor, they always blame someone else for their poverty. At age 7, you may not understand these people but by the time you're 17, you're already successfully initiated into their evil world. What then happens is that as a young adult, whether you listen to your father, your mother, your uncles or teachers, everyone is blaming someone else for their state of being poor. It doesn't matter how strong you are, the natural thing to do is to become like these people. By the time an average human is 21 in a poor country, he has started thinking that the reason why he is poor is that the government or devil makes him poor. From this point, you can see how easy it is for these people to be poor and also make their children poor. It's pretty simple. Whenever you blame someone else for your life, what you're doing is folding your arms and saying, it's not my fault. Let the man who causes man poverty, let the man who causes man's poverty to come and make me rich. It's not my fault. Let the man who causes poverty to come make me rich. So the number one reason why most people are poor in poor countries is that everyone around them is poor when they are growing up. These people would not have become poor solely because everyone is poor. It's even worse because most poor people blame someone else for their poverty and then they successfully teach their children to learn how to blame others for their lives. They have successfully destroyed such children's lives because they too will grow up not taking responsibility for their lives. The other problem about growing up in a community where everyone is poor is because you will never have any worthwhile mentor. Because everyone is poor, their advice will just lead you to where they are and that's not where you want to be. For instance, I had to stop taking advice from everyone in my family when I was about age 19. The reason I stopped taking advice from these people is that all their advice is very bad and they think their advice is the best. 
For example, my family members advise me to get a university degree because if I don't have a degree, I cannot be successful in life. They advise me that it is good to work for a bank while I think it's better to build a bank. I mean, almost every advice my family members gave me about money even till this day is stupid. And what I did was to ignore them and instead choose successful people online and through books to be my models. Not everyone can do what I did. In fact, not everyone will ever have the insight into the fact that your poor uncles and parents had given the wrong advice about money. And that's a major reason why most people in poor countries are poor. The strong exploit the weak. When I claim in this video that one of the reasons why most people are poor in poor countries is because they have poor mentors, someone will ask me, okay, who made the first man poor before he became a mentor for others? This is a good question and the answer is in the fact that the world is a jungle, a jungle where the strong eat the weak. Most of the years of our existence as humans are filled with battles between nations. We should also remember colonization and exploitation from one country to another. All these battles would not have left some countries poor if not because they are not physical battles. Think about it as you would think about rape. When a man rapes a woman, he thinks it's just a physical act but for a woman, it's spiritual and emotional. And though the act of rape can happen in five minutes, the victim can leave with the pains for 50 years. Similar things happen when a country invades, overpowers and colonizes another for many years. For those who are asking how the first man became poor, I think that is how the first man became poor. But that's not an excuse for you to be poor. You see, the poverty of your forefather may not be his fault because he was probably taken as a slave for 30 years. But your poverty is yours because you have the power to liberate yourself country and personal prosperity. Another reason why many people are poor in poor countries is that most people seem not to understand that there are differences between national prosperity and personal prosperity. Because most people don't know that there's a difference between personal and national prosperity, many people in poor countries want to run to rich countries. Many Africans want to run to America. Many Indians thought they could migrate to Europe and that's another problem. You see, Running to a rich country won't guarantee your prosperity because even in the country that you're running to, most people are still poor. Now that I've tried to pinpoint some of the reasons why most people are poor in poor countries, let me try and show you how to be rich in a poor country. 1. Disown every mentor you have Well, I don't mean that you should legally get rid of everyone in your life. I simply mean that you should stop taking their advice or spending much time with them except they are positive-minded. Growing up in Africa, the culture of my tribe requires that I listen to and follow the advice of everyone who is older than me. But at about the age of 19, I started revolting against the advice of my family members, especially their advice about money. When I was 21, it had become very obvious that I was a black sheep of the family. Until today, these people just don't have any advice I can follow about money. Don't get me wrong, I love my mother, father, uncles and siblings. I love my African friends but I don't take advice or spend time with you if you're negative. This is the first thing I think you should do if you're from a poor country. Do away with negative people. Stop taking money advice from poor people. Instead, go to the library and read books from the rich and successful people. Check online and follow some inspiring people who will make you believe in yourself. 2. Understand the difference between personal and national poverty. Don't assume that you have to be poor simply because your country is poor. You can be rich even in a poor country. As I have explained earlier, being rich is not a factor of where you are from or where you live. Being rich is a factor of how you use your mind. 3. See the half full cup I suffered ill health for the first 17 years of my life and I hated life for every minute of those sicknesses. However, a few years after I regained my health, I understood that such terrible health challenges was a blessing in disguise. The lesson here is that most bad situations have hidden opportunities in them. But human nature really takes time to look for opportunities in bad situations. If you live in a poor country, you have to learn how to see the cup of your country is half full, not half empty. You have to be positive and believe that there are opportunities for you somewhere in some corner. Only you can believe that and take proactive actions that will lead you there. In conclusion, Everyone watching this video from Africa or Asia should sit down and rethink 
their path in life. We should stop being negative about what is possible for us. We should believe in ourselves and pursue really big dreams. We should understand that money is not a product of any geographical location, but the product of our mind. I hope this video helps someone. Thank you very much for watching our videos. I'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.